name, Father, we bless your holy name. You are worthy to be praised. King of glory, we worship you. There is none like you. There is none before you. Bless your holy name. The word is to be praised. There is no like you. Thank you, Father. I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I've sought my presence as you rise the light. Worship you. You are welcome. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. Obian Wale Kaja Boya Ezekes and Alekine Ezekele Kanindo. I bought to told in Anno Obian Wale Kaja Boya Ezekes and Alekine Emimere Kanindo. Some saw praises in my mouth. I always sing them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises as you bring the life to me. Some soft praises in my mouth, I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises as you bring the life to me. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. My brothers and sisters, it is another day, another glorious day in the land of the living. To God be the glory. Let's give God some praises. Come on, come on, come on. Let's give God some praises and worship Him. You are welcome, James. God bless you as you join my husband. God bless you. Everyone that are joining on social media, you are welcome. You are welcome, even the ones in the church. God bless you, everybody. As you join today Bible study, we're going to dig deep into the Bible. I'm here, and someone keep on calling me, and they never called me for a long time. I finished this for this my Bible study. I'm going to call that person. Why are you disturbing our service? The devil is a liar, and I cast out every disturbance, every distraction. 
right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everyone online, for all of us. As we're about to dig deep into your word, we know that there will be so many distractions, phone calls, anything that will distract us. Take it away, Father, so that in these few minutes, few minutes, in 24 hours, just few minutes to die with you, eat with you, laugh with you, sit with you, because you have a high sense of humor. And anybody going to distract us, Father, don't let them come on our phone. In the name of Jesus, even this person that I've been calling, Father, don't let precious call me again, no. God, in the name of Jesus, let him stop calling me because I have nothing to do with precious right now. Father, I thank you. I bless your name. I cover this place with the blood of Jesus. I cover everybody with the blood of Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. We worship you. I can't do without you. I have to worship you before we start. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you are doing, what you are about to do, for answering our prayer, for our family, for your love, for joy, glory, for peace, oh, for career, call. Father, Calabo, Cynthia, thank you for your healing power from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. My brother and sister, we're not going to stay too long today. We're just going to dive into it. Like Chukudu always say, dive into it. Let's speak a young people English. Let's dive into it and dive out. Amen, somebody. Today we're still on the book of Judges. And the title that we're going to go today will be, Keep God at the Center of Your Life. Again, keep God at the Center of Your Life. And we're going to start with um, uh, chapter 5. That's what we're going to do with today, chapter 5 and chapter 6. So, verse 1 said, you know his Bible, so we're going to read. On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of uh, Abin Abinoma, sang this song. When the, pri uh, when the princes, uh, prince in Israel take the head, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hear this, you kings. Listen, you rulers. I will sing to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. I will make music to the Lord, the God of Israel. Look like Deborah knows what we're going to do today. Amen. Oh Lord, when you went out from Sinai, when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured the cloud, pour uh, uh, down water. The mountains quake. Before the Lord, the one and uh, the one of Sinai, before the Lord, the God of Israel, in the days of Shana. So, my brothers and sister, that is uh, the chapter uh, 5, verse 1 to 5. Music and singing, like I said, the title today is Keep God at the Center of Your Life. Can someone type it down for me? The title today, today is Keep God at the Center of Your Life. Keep God at the Center. That means everything you do in this world. Let God be the one that you talk to first before you do anything. Even to the extent of drinking water, to the extent of going outside, to the extent of your clothes that you should wear. Keep God, because God knows how to choose clothes too. I have a living testimony. You don't have to go and be doing this in your closet. God knows how to match your shoe. Because he knows your heart. He lives in your heart. So you activate him. He does everything. Even the food you're going to eat and how you're going to go use the bathroom. God, put God, keep God at the center of your life. Music and singing were cherished part of Israel culture. Like today, music and singing, I don't know about you, it's, my, it's, it's a big culture for me. It's, I don't call it culture, it's a lifestyle for me. You know, sometimes I, I'll go through certain things, I, I don't know how I come out of it because once I put music in, read the word of God and, and sing and dance, that, that problem is gone. So on that time too, it's so amazing. Music and singing was, was a cherished part of Israel culture, my brothers and sisters. Chapter 5 is a song sang and possibly composed by Deborah and Barak. It said to music, the story Israel's great victory recounted in chapter 4. This victory song was accompanied by joyous celebration. It proclaimed God's greatness by giving him credit Credit for the victory it was, uh, for the victory he had. It was an excellent way to preserve and uh, retell this wonderful story from generation to generation. One thing I was telling my children that I say, God is a God that always repeats Himself. God is a parent, He's a father, He's a mother, He's everything. He always repeats Himself. I tell you to do this. I tell you to do that. You go to Genesis, He will repeat Himself. You go to February, uh, 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 Exodus, He will repeat Himself. That's God for you. So He's repeating so that you won't say, Oh, I forgot. So if you forget in Genesis, you will not forget in Exodus. If you forget in Exodus, you will not forget in Leviticus. And so forth, and so on, and so forth. So on this, uh, this one, 
the, 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 the history, the credit for the victory, it was an excellent way to preserve and retell this wonderful story from generation to generation. Other songs in the Bible uh, are listed in the chart in Exodus 15. Chapter 5, in victory, Barak and Deborah sang praises to God. Songs of praises focus our attention on God. Every time you are singing a song of praises, thank you so much, but then I for typing the title, appreciate that, sir. Every time you 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 sing a uh, songs of praises, focus on uh, attention on God. It gives us an outlet, an outlet for spiritual celebration. I don't care what you go through. When you leave this. Bible study today. Learn how to sing. Even if you don't know how to sing, remember what you know. You went to Bible study. You went to uh, Sunday school as a child. Your parents take you to church. There are some songs back in your village, back in your town, back in your in your head that you remember during when you were a kid. I don't care what it is. Just sing it. Don't sing it to your mama in your mind. Sing it out of your voice, and you see that problem will not disappear without you knowing. So when you sing, when Barak and Deborah sang praises to God, they were just focusing themselves on God and saying, God, you are the only one that can take us to this world. So my brothers and sisters, if you don't listen, understand what I'm teaching today, remember that I said songs of praise focus our attention on God. And if you want to type this, that would be great because those are one of the points that people will come in and they look at our Bible, Bible so they say, oh, and they can push them to listen to the Bible study. Songs of praise focus our attention on God, uh, on God, and it gives us an outlet for spiritual celebration and remind us of the faithfulness and character of God. Whether you are experiencing a great victory or major dilemma, struggle or problem or singing or, 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 or problem, singing praises to God can have a positive effect on your attitude, my brothers and sisters. War was the inevitable result when Israel chose to follow false gods. Whenever you go disobey God, you are in trouble. So although God had given Israel clear directions, like God is giving me and you clear directions on what to do, but every time they disobey, war was the inevitable result because they disobey God by, by worshipping other gods and other gods cannot help them, so they fall, they fall into themselves into trouble. The people failed to put his word, put God's word into practice. Without God at the center of their national life, you know what our, our topic is God is the, is the center of our life. God be the focus of our life, everything we do. So without God at the center of, of uh, their national life, pressure from the outside soon become greater than power from within. They were an easy prayer for their enemies. If you are letting a desire for recognition, craving for power, craving for money, or love for money, rule, rule, uh, rule uh, your life, love for money, ruling your life, and power, you may find yourself besieged by enemies of stress, anxiety, illness, fatigue. Keep God at the center of your life, my brothers and sisters, which is our topic. Keep God as the center of your life because all these things I said will not follow you. Even to, in the process of the stress, in the process of the illness that caused heart attack, that caused stroke, that caused diabetes, that caused high blood pressure, and that caused death. But once we put God at the center of our life, we only die when God once said, Come, I'm done with you, my, da my daughter. Come, I'm done with you, my son. Come my faithful servant. But if we don't depend on God and put him at the center of our life, that's how you see, if you go to cemetery, there are so many people that die today and they're not supposed to die. Yesterday, they, somebody sent me something about Bob Marley. You know, I all this time, we listen to this man, uh, there are this legend, this music, we listen to him dance and we love him. You know, it was just yesterday, I knew that Bob Marley died when he was 36 years. I didn't know, you know, because as kid we just hear this music coming and coming. Where you know he he is for me. I listen to a lot of music and and this man, the his song is always touching and he always says about justice and uh, uh, help uh, uh, save their nation and oppressions and and uh, you know. And I was like, wow, thirty six years old. He was a very young man, but Mali died a young man. 
with all his talent and gift. And I do, and, you know, it was then too I knew that it was cancer that killed him. He, doesn't, he didn't want to cut off his head, uh, his leg, uh, amp, uh, led them to amp, uh, his leg. But I tell you, like I was telling my son yesterday, if Bob Marley had someone that would advise him well, or if he wasn't stubborn, he would have, he would have realized that, hey, if they cut my leg, my brain was still on. I would still be singing, but I know it might be pride as a man. How is he going to use his leg again to jump reggae music? So I'm just using this as an as, as something, you know. If he was if you if he was there and give his life to God, like he sing his songs, ah, uh, even God will not even let him go because it, it's not like every death is is fine. There are deaths that is not okay. Thirty six years is too young for a talented, for a gifted, for a skilled man like Bob Marley. But I'm just saying, if we, if he, that man have keep his God, keep God at the center of his life, even with that cancer, he would have been healed. Even with that cancer, even if the ample leg, he would have been healed. I keep a welcome, long time no see, man. You abandon us. <laughs> we are so excited to see you today. So that is what it is. So I saw that. Uh, uh, this thing they sent to me, I'm like, wow, but Mali died very young. Just imagine, but Mali still living in this whole world, 60, 70, 80, 100. Oh my God, it would have been great songs coming out of him. But that man died. Uh, so if you go to cemetery, a lot of talent, a lot of gifts have died. Because why? They did not keep God at the center of their life which is our topic, and you will have the power you need to fight these destroyers when you keep God as a center of your life. You will have the power to fight your need, destroyers, your struggles, your enemies, in the name of Jesus. Four tribes, Reuben, Gelad, Ida, Gad, or Manasseh, Dan, and Ashley were accused of not lending, lending a help in the battle. No reason are given for their refusal to help their fellow Israelites, but there may be same ones that stop them from driving out Canaanites in the first place. One, lack of faith in God to help. Two, lack of effort. Three, fear of the enemies. And four, fear of uh, uh, antagonize those uh, those. Uh, um, those with whom they did not be, they did business and those from whom they proposed. This disobedience showed a lack of enthusiasm for God's plan. It cut down God's plan when they disobey God. We have to be careful the way we disobey God. So yes, from this uh, from this time the. The Midianites were des uh, desert people descended from Abraham's second wife, Cortes Karata. In Genesis 25, you can see that. From this relationship came a nation that was always in conflict with Israel. Years earlier, the Israelites, while still wandering in the desert, battled the, uh, with, battled with, the, uh, with the Midianite. They battled with the Midianite. The Israelites, uh, uh, years earlier, the Israelites, the years earlier, the Israelites were still wandering in the desert, battled with the Midianites, and almost total destroyed them in Numbers 31, 120. Because of their failure to completely destroy them, however, the tribe repopulated. That's why when God gives us instruction, we should be careful. God said, go to that country. Kill everybody, take off every sin, because if you take off everything, that means you're taking off the sin of that country. But no, we go and do something else, because we feel that we know better than God. This is what Israelites did. They didn't kill all of them, and now they repopulated. They have more children, more people, more uh, military, more people. And here they were once again oppressing Israel again. So what did Israel do? They went back to Senda. They went back during the time of Moses of fighting battle, during the time of Joshua of fighting battle, because they did not listen to God. The land of uh, meek and honey, the land of peace, become the land of war. Oh, what a pity. May God don't let us be disobedient to the place where our land of peace will become our land of struggle, where our land of joy will become our land of fighting and war. Again, the Israelites hit the rock, rock bottom before turning back to God. They always go to on their way and doing stuff before they say, God, I'm sorry. 
how much suffering they could have avoided if they had trusted God in the first place and listened to God in the first place and take the word of God. Turning to God should not be a last restore, rewind joy. Turning to God, my brothers and sisters, should not be the last restore because we rock, we, we wait until we hit the rock bottom, call our friends, go to a church, do all you, do this, go to the herbalist, go to this, and by the time we know we will spend all our money we have used to train our children or even put food on the table, then by the time we realize God, we have already hit the rock bottom, and before turning back to God, how much suffering we would have avoided if we had trusted God in the first place. How much struggle, how much pain, how much sorrow, how much barrenness, how much singleness, how much uh, 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 jealousy, how much masturbating, how much prostitution, how much they would have avoided, how much stealing, how much lying, how much sin in, in general, we should have avoided if we have turned to God in the first place and listened to Him and go with His command. Turning to God should not be a last restore, my brothers and sisters. We should look to Him for help each day. Each day. That's why I love this uh, part of uh, prayer. He said, Our Father who art in heaven, I love you, thy name, that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. My brother, he didn't say give us these days. There's no S to it. Give us this day. That means. God is saying, I'm a jealous God. I'm your father. If I give you days, you will not remember me. You know, God, God is a very jealous God. So he said, I want you to come each day. Come daily. Come and ask me for what you want daily. Remember in, uh, in the book of, um, or the uh, book, when, when he gave the, uh, the Israelites manners to eat. He, the Bible recorded that he gave them manners that we read them each day. And he gave them instruction, don't take more than the one you will eat today. But you know, some of us went, some people went and take more to hide it. You know, guess what? The Bible recorded that by the time they check it the next day, the man had turned to warm. Ew. Ew. God did not kill them, but the man had turned to warm. Warm, warm, warm. Like, who, who can eat warm? And it was then they realized that we should obey Moses, who God have already told them what to do so the same thing happened to us if we don't take our time we should be able to obey god the, the, uh, you know because this isn't uh, uh, is a uh, uh, life will always be easy not at all so god we should look to him for help each day everything we need daily go to god daily for your joy daily for your peace daily for your finance daily for your children daily for your pr everything you need in your life that is bothering you as a woman being yeah, that's why he say he the heavy lady bring your bring your load to me daily each day this isn't to say life will always be easy not at all there will be struggles my brothers and sisters but god will give us the strength the victory the peace to live through them. Don't wait until you are the end of the rope. What did I say? Don't wait until you are the end of the rope, my brothers and sisters. Don't wait until you hit the, ro the rock bottom, the bottomless bottom where you can't fall, your bottomless pit where you are falling, falling, before you call on God. Call on God first in every situation. That is another title. And it's the same title, but another title you can put it the, like, like, you know, like, Put God in your center of your life is like call on God first in every situation. That will stop your bottomless pit. That will stop your rock bottom. That will stop you. Stop your if your struggle is going to be one year, it will not be one day or two days because you call on God. You go through the fear, go through that pain like nothing is going on. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody, somebody shout hallelujah. And chapter six, the Old Testament records several appearances of the angels of the Lord. Let's quickly read. Again, the Israelites did evil in the in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Malachite, the Midianites, because the power of the Midian was so oppressive. The Israelites prepared shelters for themselves and in the mountain cave and cave caves and stronghold whenever the israelites planted their corpse listen to me farmers 
Listen to me, workers, because if you're not there, all of us are farmers. When you go to your office, you're a farmer. You're going to your office to work, and when you work, you get paid. That is your root, that's your uh, your crop. So this is their farmer here. Every time they planted their crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites and other Eastern people invaded the country. They encamped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents and like swarms of lutus. It was impossible. Listen, it was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it, to ravage it. And uh, Midianite so impossible in Polish Israel that they cried out and the Lord for help. They suffered so much. The Midianite, before they planned their seed, the Midianite would just come and take it. Before he arrived, they were watching them. You know how devil is. And they never enjoyed their fruit. Before they would go to go get their fruit to feed their camel, to feed their children, the Midianite, the Amalekites, and all those enemies have come to take it over. May God don't let us walk and somebody else will reap calabos in the air. Hey, may God don't let us to walk and somebody else reap in the name of Jesus. That is a prayer you're going to go home with today. As you're driving, as you're at work, pray that prayer. Say, God, do not let me walk and somebody else reap. Because that's exactly what they're going through in chapter 6. Why? Because of sin. The Old Testament records several appearances of angels of the Lord in Genesis 16. And it is known whether the same angel appeared in each case. The angel mentioned, the angel mentioned, uh, um, mentioned here appears to be separate from God in one place. And yet the same God, the same as God in another place. This has led some to believe that the angels was a special appearance of Jesus Christ prior to his mission on the earth as recorded in the New Testament. It is also possible that as a special messenger from God, in a, uh, as a special messenger from God, the angels had authority, yes, to speak for God. In either case, God sent a special messenger to deliver an important message to Gideon. Like it's delivered to a lot of us in this world that we're living. Treasuring was the process of separating the grains of wheat, wheat from the useless uh, outer share called chaff. Like I, I, I always joke with my husband, son, I say the chaff before the wings <laughs> when things are not in order. This was normally done in the large area. If you read Psalms, it's over there. This was normally done in the large area, often on a hill where where the wind could blow away the lighting shuffle when the farmer tossed the, be the, the beating weed into the air. You know, I don't know about you guys, but you know, you remember our mothers those days when they, when those days we have those rice, those dirty rice that um, we, we have not started, started seeing the foreign rice. People cannot afford some of the foreign rice then. So they would do their, their they put it on a big tray and they would do their hand and the, the, the shuffle will come out and our mother would blow it. <laughs> Is anybody know about that? Take your hands off. Say, I know what you're talking about, Joy. And even there, apart from rice, beans too. You know, beans, those days at home, they have, they still have the, those uh, shuffles and those shuffles before the winds are called the shuffles before the winds. You know, and uh, our parents, uh, our mothers, we go, saw them, saw them, saw them, do the tray, do the tray, and they blow it. That's exactly what Gideon was doing here. So Gideon did not have a tree, a tray, but he would keep it in a place where the wind will come and the wind will blow the, the dirty ones and leave the better one for them. That's exactly the scenario here. So amazing how you grow up, certain things are happening. And when you read the Bible, you see them again like, wow. So the former tossed the beating wind into the air. If Gideon had done this, however, he would have been an easy target for the bands of raiders who were overrunning the land therefore he was forced to trash his weight in a wine press because if he does that the enemy will just come pack it you know because they, they keep on oppressing them keep on oppressing them but then Gideon came and hide his own in a wine press so they would think so it's just a wine press and it's not season for wine press so a bit that uh, therefore he was forced to trash his wheat in a bit in a wine press a pit that was probably hidden from the view 
that will not be suspected as a place to find a farmer's crops. Gideon was wise. So Gideon questioned God about the problem he and his nation faced and about God's apparent lack of help. Let's read verse 13 when Gideon was questioning God. But sir, Gideon replied, no, let's start from 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ephraim that belonged to Josh and the Amalekite where his son Gideon was, threshing the wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Amalekites, to keep it from the enemies. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why was all this happened to us? Where are his wonders? And our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt now? Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us. Put us into the hand of a minute, uh, a Midianite, into the hand of the Midian. The Lord returned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian and Midian's hand. I am. Am I not sending you? But, but, uh, but Lord Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My, <clears throat> my clan is a weakness in, <clears throat> in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike them, all the Midianites together. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in the, your eyes, give me a sign, and that is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Let's stop there. So in this place, Gideon questioned God about the problems. Does that mean and you do the same when we go through? God, where are you? But God, I'm doing what I have to do. God, I go to church. I pay my tithe. I pay my offering. God, I love you. God, I fast. God, I pray every day. I read your Bible. Why am I going through this? That's exactly what Gideon was questioning God, the angel of God, the angel that God has sent. Question God about problems and he and his nation face about God's appearance of lack of help. What he did not acknowledge was the fact that the people had brought calamity uh, 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 um, upon themselves. Whenever we go through, we should first of all check ourselves, check in within yourself. What have you done wrong? Have you seen? Some problems, like I said before, is not seen. But calamities comes because of some things that we've done. It will come back to us. They call it boomerang, a law of karma. What goes around comes around. That's what they're going through. So, so Gideon is busy talking about God. What did they do? But what he did not acknowledge was the fact that the people had brought karma, uh, um, calamity upon themselves when they decide to disobey and neglect God. Let us not disobey and neglect God. Because whenever we do that, there's always something you have to pay for. How easy it is to overlook personal accountability and blame our problems on God and others. Oh, I'm doing this because of that. I'm doing that because of that. I remember one of my sons when he was young. Every time I say, why are you talking in class? Oh, I'm, I'm talking in class because Mr. Nicole wants me to talk. Really? Really? Come on, you have to bear your consequences. Did I send you to school with uh, Nicole? You know, as a little boy, he was just about four or five years. And, you know, so you grow up now. I'm like, hey, I remember when you were small. I said, why are you doing this? In because this person make me do. No, nobody makes you do anything, my brothers and sisters. Even adults still fool themselves today. I did it because he make me. Nobody makes you do it. In fact, Satan have suffered. Hey, Satan don't suffer. Witchcraft don't suffer. Wicked ones don't suffer. Uh, uh, it's the work of devil. God, de keep your mouth shut. There's nothing like work of devil. Before you start doing it, before devil jumps into you, it was your thought and your mind and your overhead thinking that you're going to do that. So be careful what you do with your personal life then come and blame others. How easy it is to overlook personal accountability and blame our problems so on God and Others. Unfortunately, this does not solve our problems at all. You can blame anybody in this world, it will not solve your problem. It brings us no closer to God when we start blaming. You know, uh, Adam and Eve. 
Oh, Eve gave me uh, the seed. Uh, Adam, uh, Eve said, they are took it from Satan. Uh, blame Tatis. I call it blame Tatis. When we start blaming, that means you are even distracting yourself from God. You are not even focused on God. But when everything is not working well, you know you've done wrong. You know you've seen and come short of glory. You know you are fitting rag. Go to God and just confess and tell God, yes, I've, I've, I've strayed again. I've err. Oh God, I've done wrong. Forgive me. So that's what uh, the, what is going on here. We have to be careful. It brings all those blame bring us no closer to God, and it escorts us to the very edge of rebellion and backsliding. But God, why? Before you know it, you are rebelling with God. You are cursing God. You are before you know it, you start cursing God. Some sometimes you went back to backsliding. When problem come. My brothers and sisters, you're asking me, so, Reverend Joy, what do we do when problem comes? When problem comes, the first place to look is within. Anytime you have a problem, like I said before, look in within, look at yourself, check yourself, what is going on? Our first action should be confession, like I said. Check within, whether you know whether you did it or not, you remember or not, go to God in confession. Go, confess to God. Our first attention, look within. The after looking within, our first at, because you are looking within to say, did I do anything wrong? Did I do anything? Okay, what have I done? If you don't remember, forget it. Just go. If you remember, go. Our first action you should go should be confession to God of sins that may have created our problem. If we remember, if we don't remember, you pray those prayers. I pray, say, God, forgive me of the sin I know, unknown sin, direct sin, small sin, big sin, hidden sin. When you go there, you are just telling God everything. Like, you know, God, I'm, I am here. I surrender myself. I'm done, God. Please, please, have mercy upon me. That's why I tell all of us, all divine servants of Christ Nation Church and members and non-members, go and keep on reading Psalm 51. Psalm 51 will help you. That was the Psalm David wrote after he committed murder and, uh, and adultery. He poured his heart to God, and that's why God called him and said, David is a, God, a man next to my heart. Because David said no, but he know how to go to God. Oh yeah, that man, that man know how to go to God. And I, as a little guy, I just copied that brother, man. He know how to go to God. And as a little guy, I said, God, me and you on this one, I'm just going to be like my daddy David. So we have to uh, uh, follow the good things of David, not the bad things of him. But in my own case, the, when I started reading the Bible, Psalms was my best book. And I read those Psalms, oh my God, I can quote them off head. And Psalm 51 is one of the Psalms. You just read, my brothers and sisters. Whether you, are, you think you're a sinner, you are not a sinner. Just you poured your heart to God. Have mercy upon me according to your loving mercy. Have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness. Create in me a pure heart. Renew in me a steadfast spirit. Create in me a pure heart. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Oh man, let, let, let me focus on this because that I'm a sound woman. So this is where we have to go to God for confession. And if you don't know how to confess our sin, go to Psalm 51. David will teach you well. In, in six, chapter uh, 6, verse 14 through 16. We read that already. And I find favor in your eyes. Give me signs that is uh, really you are talking to me. We've read that. So 16, we read all those. I will be with you. As God said in verse 16, God told Gideon and God promised to give him the strength he needed. The strength he needed to overcome the opposition, to overcome the enemy, to overcome the Amalekite, to overcome the Midianite, to overcome all the 9999, nine, all the wickedness. In spite of this clear promise, promise for strength, Gideon made excuses. Is that not what we do? I cannot do this. I cannot do this. Seeing only... His limitations and weaknesses. He failed to see how God could walk through him. He forget the Bible that said God will take the weak things of this world and make it strong. Uh, 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 the, the weak things of this world and make it uh, uh, strong. Like Gideon, we are called to serve God in specific ways. My brothers and sisters, like Gideon, we are called to serve God in specific ways. Although God promised us the tools and strength we need, 
we need, but we often make excuses. I cannot do it. I have children. Uh, my leg is bending me. I'm too tall. I'm not black, but they are white. I'm green, but I don't talk like them. I don't walk like them. I don't have the money. I don't do this. What are you giving excuses? The God that say he will give you strength. Let him do everything that he needs. Even if not his money, he will provide it. If his power, he will provide it. If his people will provide it. But you just have to have that thing I call F-A-I-T-H, faith. Faith will help you not to give excuses, my brothers. We often make excuses, but reminding God of our limitation only implies that he does not know all about us or that he, that, uh, he, he has made a mistake in evaluating our character. Every time we doubt God, we're saying, God, you don't know me. You don't know my character. We're cursing God. Because God knows everything about you before you even you form your mother's womb. God knows how many hairs in your hair. God knows when you are going to die. God knows when you are born. God knows what, what you are going to be. So don't spend your time making excuses. That's what I'm trying to say, my brothers and sister. Instead, spend your time in doing what God called you to do. Hello, somebody. Rewind, Reverend. Don't spend your time making excuses, my brothers and sisters all over the world that's listening to me. Instead, spend it doing what God wants you to do. Why was Gideon afraid of seeing an angel? The Israelites believed that no man, the Israelites believed that no man, no man will be able to see God. They believed that no one could see God and live. You know, in those uh, times, they say, even Moses during the time, God said, You will see my behind, but you will not see my face. Because when you see God's face, you will die. You know, during, you know, this is the same Old Testament. So they believe that whoever that sees God will die. So see God's word in Moses, in Exodus, you see, evidently, Gideon thought this was applied, this will, this will apply to what is happening to him uh, uh, right there. That that, that, that uh, evidently Gideon thought this also applied to the angels. But angels are messengers from God. After God called Gideon to be Israelite deliverance, he immediately asked God, asked him to tear down the, 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 the uh, altar of the pagan god, the Baal, and acts that will test Gideon's faith and commitment. Canaanite religions was very political, so an attack on God was often seen as an attack on the local government, supporting that God. If caught, Gideon will face a serious social problems and prob probable uh, physical attack. And for all this, uh, uh, you will see all this in, um, in uh, chapter 2, 11, and Gideon took a great risk by following God's higher law, which especially forbids I do worship. After learning what uh, Gideon had done, the time people wanted to kill him, the time people wanted to kill him and devour him. But many of those people were fellow Israelites, his brothers and sisters, that would have said, oh, let's leave him because he's trying to bring, remind us of our God that helped our forefathers. But the same people wanted to kill him. This shows how immoral God's people had become. God said in Deuteronomy 13, 6 and 11, that idolatry, idolatry must be stoned to death. But these Israelites wanted to stone Gideon for tearing down an idol and worshipping God, the big God, the big G. The big G-O-D. When you begin to accomplish something for God, my brothers and sisters, when you begin to do what God called you to do, you may be criticized. You may be hated. Oh, yes. Uh, people will hate you. People will tell you a sort of thing. You will be criticized by the very people who should support you. Amen, somebody. I don't know about you, but I'm a living testimony. Every time you're doing what God called you to do, the same people that would have said, oh, this is good, and pat you on the back and say, let's go. They'll criticize you. They'll bring you down. They'll tell you how you should not do it. But beware, be careful when they start doing that. Find someone that will encourage you. All you need is one person. The armies of Midianite and Amalekai camp in the Valley of Jaria and the agricultural center for the area. Whoever uh, control the valleys, rich, fertilized land, control the people who live in the in, in and around. Because of the value, vast resources, many major, many major trade routes covered at the pass where which led into into it. 
which led into it, this made the site of many great battles. Gideon's men attacked the enemy's uh, 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 armies from the hills, and the only escape route was through the passing towards, uh, towards the Jordan River. That is why Gideon urged some of, uh, of, uh, of uh, his tri uh, trip to take control of the river's crossing point. Was Gideon testing God or was he simply asking God for more encouragement? In either case, though his motive was right, to obey God and defeat enemies, his method was less than idea. Gideon seems to have known that his request might displease God. And yet, he demanded two miracles. Even after witnessing the miracles fire from the rock, it's true that to make good decision, we need facts. We need facts. But in this case, Gideon had all the facts he needed. But still, he hesitated. He delayed obeying God because he wanted even more proof. Demanding extra signs was an indication of unbelief, no faith. Fear often makes us wait for more confirmation when we should be taking action. You know, we tell God, God, do this. He said, I'm waiting on God. God, God already do what he wants. God already spoken. God already sent you. God already given you everything you needed. But you still say, I'm still waiting on God. We gotta be careful. Demanding extra signs was an indication of unbelief. Fear often makes us wait for more confirmation when we should be taking action. When God told, uh, um, Abraham. He said, Abraham, go. He didn't say, Abraham, stand up, make right, make left. He just said, go. And that's what God tells all of us. When his girl say, go, go. When he says, stand, stand. When he says, sit, sit. When he says, be quiet, be quiet. So, fear of unknown makes us wait for more confirmation. We should be taking actions, visible signs, and unnecessarily, if we only confirmed what we already know is true, Today, the greatest means of God's guidance is His Word. How do you know what God is saying is true? The greatest, today, the greatest means of God's guidance, God's uh, uh, promise on God, things that is to say to us, benefit, is His Word. The Word of God that we're talking about. I always tell you guys, instead of putting face in the book, you got to put the face in the book, put your face in the book. The word of God is the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our part in the vice of Christ. That is our 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 item in the vice of Christ. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our part. That's what it is. Today, greatest means of God guidance is His word, the Bible. Unlike Gideon, he were he. We have God's complete revealed word. Gideon did not have all this revealed word, but we do. If you want to have more uh, of God's guidance, don't ask for signs, my brothers and sisters. Just put your face in the book. Put your face in the book. Study the Bible. The Second Timothy 3.16 said it all. After seeing the miracles of the wet pharaoh, why did Gideon ask for another miracle? Perhaps he thought the result of the first test could have been happening naturally. A thick flow could retain moisture longer after the sun had dried the surrounding ground. Putting the flowers is a poor decision-making method. Those who do this put limitation on God. When you start doubting God, God, if I do this, you do this. If I do this, God will just say, I better go sit down. I'm not get time for you. There's a scenario. Something is happening in one of my branches in the world. And, uh, you know, I keep this person to be a, uh, be preaching and doing the work of God. But, you know, it's like he's getting on, the, on his head and saying, I'm the pastor. I'm this. And, and um, I said every second Sunday is for children, a uh, youth Sunday. And one, one young girl, 15 years, just preached the gospel. I'm like, wow, this is exactly what I told you guys to do. Don't be wasting time. The Vice of Christ Mission Church is not a church you waste your time and stay there long. No, you check in, you check out. And this person was so jealous of this young girl. And that is exactly what is happening here. When you try to say, I'm too much, I'm doing for God. Like I say, oh, I'm Reverend Dr. George, the Geo, I'm the one. God, will say, God is a God of availability. If you are available, he will use you. That's why he said in the Bible, if you don't worship me, if you don't do what you have to do, I will rise up the rock and I will make the children. And I, my, my dear, my brothers and sisters, every day I'm seeing God do what he said. He's raising the children. He's raising the rock. Speak. 
And our prayer is that, God, please do not let the rock speak for me. Don't let the children speak for me. I will speak for myself. I will worship you by myself. Pray and do your work and read your Bible by myself. In the name of Jesus, God should not allow the stone to cry out for us or the children. Because that's what is happening on behalf of that person now. Now the children are taking care of that, that uh, position now. And uh, he, she, he doesn't know that he has missed it. But it's not about me. It's about God. So a tick fire could retain moisture longer. Putting the fire is a poor decision-making method. Those who do this put limitation on God. They ask Him to fit their expectation. When you start getting God to fit your expectation, you, you are in trouble. The results of such experiments are usually inconclusive and does fail to make us any more confident about our choice. Don't let a fairy become a substitute for God. Don't let any problem become a substitute for God's wisdom that comes through the Bible study and prayer. Amen, somebody. That is one of our prayer. Today we're going to talk about our sister called Deborah. We're going to round up Deborah character. Wise leaders are real. They accomplish great amount of work without direct involvement because they know how to work through other people. Amen. They are able to see big picture that often escapes those directly involved. So they make good meditate, good uh, mediators, advisors, and planners. Deborah, my brothers, my sister, Deborah, the great lady in the Bible, the prophetess, uh, the judge, one of the lady in the judge, all judges were men, but Deborah was one lady, one lady that fit this description perfectly, like I just said. She had all these leadership skills, and she had a remarkable relationship with God. Every time you have a remarkable relationship with God, be you man, woman, small, babies, uh, 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 children, there's something peculiar about you. There's something, something peculiar. Deborah have a remarkable relationship with God. The insight and confidence God gave this woman placed her in a unique position in the Old Testament. Deborah is among the outstanding women of history. Amen, somebody. Hey, we got to clap for, De for Deborah. He, the Bible says it was among the outstanding woman of history. Her story shows that she was... Uh, 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 she was uh, she 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 was uh, a no nonsense woman. She does not tolerate no nonsense. She did not play with God. She wanted to serve God with all her all her life. Deborah was a great woman. Deborah fit all the all the uh, uh, description perfectly. She had all this leadership, and Deborah is among the standing history. Her story shows that 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 uh, she was. She was not power hungry, not at all, but she was faith hungry, amen? She wanted to serve God whenever, whenever praise came her way, she gave God the credit, she gave God the glory, she did not deny or resist her position in the culture as a woman and wife, but she never allowed herself at all to be, she never allowed herself uh, 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 to be hindered by, by it e either. Like, oh, I'm the one doing this, or oh, I'm the one that know God. Her story shows that God can accomplish great things through people who are willing to be led with Him. Deborah's life challenges us in several ways. She reminds us of the need to be available both to God and to others. Like I was talking about the other leader that I put somewhere. You have to be available as a leader for others and for God. She encourages us to spend our effort on what we, 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 on what, uh, we can do rather than on worrying about what we cannot do. Put your own effort on what you can do instead of worrying on what you cannot do. Deborah challenges us to be wise leaders. Amen. She demonstrates what a person can accomplish when God is in control. When God is at the center of your life, which is our topic, you will see that things will work different. The strength and accomplishments of Deborah fought an only female judge of Israel. You know, I said it. Fought an only female uh, judge of Israel. Special ability as a mediator, advisor, and a counselor. When called on to, to lead, he was able to plan, direct, to plan and direct and delegate. That uh, Deborah was the, the one, a whole military uh, 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 head. Barak said, uh, Deborah, if you are not going with me, I'm not going. What a, what a nonsense. Known for her prophetic power. 
a writer of song is, is Deborah. Lesson from lesson from what we can learn from De uh, Deborah's life. God chooses leaders by his standards, not our standards. You might say, Oh God, I can't do it, but don't bother. God chooses you. God chooses me. That God tell me in John, book the book of John. He said, Joy, I choose you, I select you. You did not choose yourself, and I know that. That is why I always go to him. Because he chose me. I cry to him. So the lesson we should hear that God chooses leaders by his standards, not our standards. Why did I choose good helpers? Better statistics. Where, where was Canaan? Occupation of uh, De Deborah, prophetess, and, uh, and the judge. Relatives was husband, uh, Libert, Liberton, and uh, the contemporaries was Barak, Jezi, Jabin, and Hazan, and Syria. The key verses of... Um, of uh, Deborah is a uh, Deborah is a prophetess, the wife of Lebanon, and he was leading uh, uh, Israel at the time of George chapter four. A sto story, life story told in Judges chapter four, and a story is told in jo Judges four and five. Prayer. We are at the end, and we're gonna do our prayer right now, quick, quick. Prayer. God, please do not let me use anything at all as a substitute to you. We've come to a place where we're talking about uh, Gideon was using all these, uh, do this and God can answer all these signs as a substitute. Come on, pray, pray, pray. God, please do not let me use anything in this world to be a substitute to you in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, do not let me use anything at all as a substitute for you in this world, Masuka Labo Shindi Laba, Yeke Kesaka Laba Sindia. Please type it down for me. God, please do not let me use anything in this world as a substitute for you in the name of Jesus. God does not have need a substitute. God is God all by Himself. So, God, help us not to use anything at all as a substitute to you. Come on, come on, pray, 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 pray. God, do not let every member of the Divine of Christ all over the world to use you anything as a subject to you. Masuke lebo makridiya, leke ke saka laba sindiya, maleke lebo shanda laba, ye masiki laba paladia. Father, in the name of Jesus. Do not let me, do not let my children, do not let my husband, do not let my family, do not let the Vestures of Christ members church all over the world to use anything as a substitute to, for you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen, somebody. Number two, as wisdom must come through Bible study. And prayer like we do. Wisdom comes from Bible study and prayer. Please, let us pray. Say, God, give me the strength to study the Bible and pray. Come on, come on, come on. Please type that Bible, uh, that top, uh, uh, prayer point for me. Oh, God, as wisdom comes from true your Bible study, as wisdom comes true Bible study, Masu Kelebo Shanda Henry, you are welcome. God bless you. Thank God we have technology. You can go back and listen to this so you're not going to miss anything. Amen, somebody. So the from prayer point as wisdom must come through Bible study and prayer. Come on, pray. The prayer point will be God give me the strength to study the Bible and pray in the name of Jesus. God give me the strength and study the Bible and pray in the name of Jesus. God give my children, give my husband, give my all the members of the Vestures of Christ Nation to all over the world. Give us the strength to study your word and put our face in the book and put our face in the book not the Facebook Facebook and not save us but put our face in the book in the name of Jesus and study and pray in the name of Jesus Masu Kelebo Sandi here Maka Kalabo Dindi Yera Kalaboti Leke Leke La Pas in the year Mako Lobo Lebe Shindi Laba all the prayer point the second prayer point God please give me the strength to study the Bible and pray prayer number three God help me so come on somebody should start typing it for me please Number three, God help me to not request anything that will displease you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a powerful prayer right there. Say, God help me not to request anything, Baba, that will displease you. 
in the name of Jesus. God, help me not to request anything that will displease you. In the name of Jesus, that's prayer number three. Number three prayer, my brother, you can type it. Thank you so much, Ike, for typing. I appreciate you. I miss you all these days, man. When you are in the Bible study, it's like, hey, I, I got my partner right here typing for me. Thank you so much. And the third prayer said, God help me to not request anything that will displease you. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, type it. God help me not to request anything that displeases you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help my children. Help my husband. Help everyone in the Church of Christ members. members to not to request anything that will displease you. In the name of Jesus, my brothers and sisters, we end. And every time I will go back to recite the prayer. The first prayer said, God Almighty, give me the strength to study. No, God Almighty, please do not let me use anything as a substitute for you. That's number one. Then number two is uh, uh, um, God God, okay, I was trying to read it from there. But number two said, as wisdom must come through Bible study, God, please help me to strengthen, uh, give me the strength to study and uh, uh, the Bible and pray. And number three said, God, help me to not request anything that would please you. My brothers and sisters, like I always say, the advantages of Christ Nation Church, all we do is come to Bible study. We don't spend no time. We don't waste our time. We are always on time. Thank you so very much for coming on this Tuesday. Great, great day of a study. We dig deep into the Bible and finish a two chapters today. My brothers and sisters, God bless you so much. Don't, don't forget our Sunday service at 11 o'clock US, 4 p.m. Nigeria, 3 p.m. Europe. And our Tuesday Bible study, which is 10 p.m. on Tuesday, uh, 10, uh, 10 a.m. Nigeria, US. Uh, 3 p.m. Nigeria and 2 p.m. Europe. Don't forget, we cut down some of our programs so that we can focus on God. Because uh, I find out that uh, along the line, churches will bambow a lot of program and they forgot the center of, of, the, of the whole program. And what is the center of the whole program? Our title, we said our title was what? Our title was put God at the center of your life. God should be the first thing, the last thing, the beginning, and the end, the center. May God bless you. My name again is Reverend Dr. John Wunimachuku, uh, Houghton James, the General Overseer, and the Shepherd Leader of the Vangelists of Christ Nation Church. May God mightily bless you. Like I will finish. God bless you and uh, I love you, but God loves you more, my brothers and sisters. Virtue Og, Virtue Og. Thank you so much, Ike. We miss you. And thank you for coming back. Please, we need to see you often. I was thinking about you. So, God bless you all. Bye now. Mwah. Mwah. Bye now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And that's the music we played. If you came late, this is our music that we started. The interlude of the music. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you.